This is Twit. Okay, Zerodium. So much is wrong with this picture. Last Thursday, January 27th, Zerodium added two new entries to what they're calling their limited time bug bounties. In this case, for Microsoft's Outlook and Mozilla's Thunderbird. This brings a total of currently active temporary bug bounties to three, since Outlook and Thunderbird are joining the long-standing WordPress pre-auth RCE, which became active on March 31st of last year and remains so today. So until last Thursday, a special bounty for WordPress pre-auth RCEs, you know, remote code executions, was all by itself. That WordPress offer explains. They said, quote, We are temporarily, this was as of March 31st, we are temporarily increasing our payout for WordPress RCEs from $100,000 to $300,000. We're looking for pre-authentication exploits affecting recent versions of WordPress. The exploit should allow remote code execution, work with default installations, and should not require any authentication or user interaction. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Thank God they're still asking, because that sort of presumes that maybe no one's come up with one yet. So the good news is, for most of the sites using WordPress today, and as we've been, we, you know, we've been talking about WordPress a lot, because unfortunately the add-ons are a security disaster. Um, but as evidenced by this long-standing and presumably still unfilled offer, uh, the base WordPress is quite secure. It's WordPress's unprofessionally written, you know just written by anybody, add-ons that are the source of all the havoc that we're talking about relative to WordPress almost on a weekly basis. I mean, a lot last year. And remote code executions involving, you know, uh, RCE vulnerabilities involving add-ons do not qualify for this special limited time offer, $300,000 being put up by Zerodium. Okay, now, there have been a number of previous limited-time offer bug bounties posted by Zerodium. Chrome had an offer for a remote code execution vulnerability, which was active from the 14th of September last year through the end of the year. Of that one, Zerodium said, quote, We are looking for remote code execution exploits affecting Google Chrome. The exploit should work with Chrome for Android... Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and support both 32-bit and 64-bit architectures. Full chains with remote code execution and sandbox escape are eligible for a $1 million bounty. You know, and again, the reason this whole the, this all bugs me is they're going to sell this to somebody who's going to use this to attack people, not somebody who's going to fix Chrome. Other previous and since expired bounties have been offered for a, a simple Chrome sandbox, a sandbox escape and also for exploits against VMware vCenter, Pigeon, ISP Config, Moodle, IceWarp, SAP NetWeaver, and VMware's ESXi. Since a few of these are moderately obscure, Moodle, an ice warp, (laughs) as we have in the past, we'd conjecture that some specific client of Zerodium has offered to pay a pretty penny for an exploit against one of these non-mainstream packages. So, a special offer was required to focus some researcher attention over in that direction. So today, now, as of last Thursday, Zerodium is targeting two of today's most popular and widely used email clients with no ending date specified in either of the cases. For Outlook, they said... 
we are temporarily increasing our payout for Microsoft Outlook remote code execution vulnerabilities from $250,000 to $400,000. We're looking for zero-click exploits leading to remote code execution when receiving slash downloading emails in Outlook without requiring any user interaction, such as reading the malicious email message <coughs> or opening an attachment. Exploits relying on opening slash reading an email may be acquired for a lower reward. And I love the term reward. Yeah, you're getting a reward. For Thunderbird, for which, unlike for Outlook, they had not been offering any standing bounty before, they're now offering $200,000 with the explanation, quote, we're looking for, and essentially the same thing, zero-click exploits affecting Thunderbird and leading to remote code execution when receiving downloading emails, blah, blah, blah. Similar, if, if, if you have to look at it or, or download an attachment, read the email, then you, you know we'll still consider paying you something, but we're going to get less excited, as will our client. So we're not paying you 200000 for that one. So, you know, if Zerodium were a, a, a beneficent enti entity working to powerfully incentivize a hackers to find the worst of the worst exploits for the purpose of then responsibly disclosing those discoveries to their publishers, I would think this was amazing. But we know what Zerodium is doing. They're a for-profit Washington, D.C.-based enterprise, and they're not even, like, hiding somewhere, uh, which resells these rewarding discoveries to their private state-based clientele. And those discoveries are then used in targeted attacks against others in direct violation of all cybercrime laws everywhere including the laws in the country of the of the countries who are using these to attack people i suppose the creation of zerodium was inevitable wikipedia reports that they pull from a pool of around 1500 researchers and that since their founding in 2015 more than $50 million has been paid out in so-called reward bounties. So I'm glad that there are other legitimate channels for reporting and being paid for such discoveries. You know, Pwn to Own, Hacker One, you know, good guys. Uh, the Zero Day Initiative, Trend Micro ZDI, you know, where those discoveries when responsibly disclosed, will be used to repair the affected software rather than to attack unsuspecting and often innocent people, typically journalists, dissidents, and other, you know, enemies of the state. But it is what it is. And now they're asking for, you know, hope to find really horrible bugs in uh, Outlook and Thunderbird, which is what uh, a payment for, you know, that reward uh, would be.